just bugging. Morning, all you bug lovers out there. This is G-Man. It's a gorgeous day here in Florida. And these are some gorgeous yellow tins, aren't they? <laughs> it goes with the sunshine. Ah, so do these orange ones. And there's some turquoise under the plastic. Now, let's get to, what, to the point. I am going to put the 79 Beetle motor together today. I'm going to replace these grommets inside the oil cooler. How do you like my black hands? I was painting as you can tell. So I'm going to replace the inner and outer grommets inside this. There's two inside here and two right here and then install that. And I've got some pieces that are dry and then I painted and um, I'm going to get this beautiful motor together so I can slap it in the car tomorrow and get it running and tune it up and get it out of here. All right, well you just take those three nuts off there and open this up and there's your grommets there. Oh boy, they've been there for a long time. I noticed these were orange when I took them off and these are black so see I always see this. People don't realize that there's two more in there. Then they put the motor all back together and uh, look what happens. That uh, actually happened to me with a motor. I, uh, I bought a car and someone already had rebuilt the motor and I cranked it up and you know drove down the road and all of a sudden I see oil and I took it back up, took it out, pulled it apart and damn sure that was it. Um, so you just put your other grommets in there these two, slap them down in there. Slide that bad boy on there. Let me... There we go. All right. Put all your washers back on there. Like I said, I saw very few washers on this motor. I don't know why people do that. I like those little wavy washers they have. Leave it to the Germans. All right. Nothing to it. Yes, it is a whole lot to it if you don't do it. <laughs> you just put your other two grommets there. And there you go. Put your nuts on there and you're all set for some oil cooling soon enough. Can't wait. All right. Put my fuel pump on. You put this little plastic piece down in there. I've got a gasket underneath it. Gasket on top. Put the uh, fuel pump little pin in there. They do have two different size pins. For, I think this is the shorter one. I can't remember. I know I've ran into different size ones before. And then I'm gonna go to the distributor, the power, waiting on some paint to dry on some other parts. Have my fuel pump in there, put my distributor on. Coming together. Oh, yeah. Won't be long now. Oh, mm -hmm. Gonna put the uh, gen alternator slash fan on here. And you have to make sure that vent is at the bottom. There we go. Go. and then just uh, set it on here and give it a good spin and make sure that nothing is hitting because you don't want to go back here again no you don't all right now remember the little opening right here you put that downward put this in here That. I figured that looked better with the black around the edge since I got a kind of a uh, black and yellow, black and yellow kind of theme going here. <laughs> Alright. And just put these on, tighten them down a little bit. See if it's going to spin. I don't hear anything. I think I'm good. All right, well, I've got the tin on. 
I really didn't put that on camera. That was uh, quite a trick with this. First time I've had to deal with this uh, aftermarket oil breather here. It is pretty nice and sharp, but look at the clearance there. I mean, it gets sandwiched here and you actually can't lay this on like you can with the stock one. You have to actually put this in between here, turn it and put it in between here and come down with the whole thing over the oil cooler, trying to plant it on the on the four studs down here and uh, <laughs> I mean it, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be but you just can't do it I mean I when I took it off I loosened these bolts and kind of brought it with it so that was the only way to put it back so it's looking sharp and uh the fans nice and quiet there yep you can see I'm starting to put my carburetor my intake manifold on and uh I'm gonna put my boots on and get these on gaskets all right that's my next step kind of a booger to get this on there too huh? but it looks nice i like how it's the black in the center that black and white and silver theme going surrounded by yellow beautiful you see i got a little carried away and got more of it done uh, i'm waiting on the carburetor because i'm gonna clean it up a little bit it doesn't look as clean as all this but he didn't want me to rebuild it so this car is going to be sold so if anybody's interested uh i've got i'm having a little issue trying to get this pan to mount properly so and of course i haven't sucked the bow cover because uh, they're painted and i want to paint these and then i want one time to go on and i still have to do the valve adjustment as you can see the motor is done for the 1979 convertible super beetle and i'm gonna stick this up here by myself boy uh, i had to use all these blocks to kind of jack it up a little bit on each side a little at a time to get this uh, jack uh, under there i wish i had two pipes on it it's a lot easier to do it by yourself with two pipes because you got both of them to hold on to and you jack it up and nothing out here on the left so i'm gonna get it up here and the timing and crank her up shouldn't be much Alrighty. I think actually my jack isn't going to bring it up here all the way so I'm going to have to support it on something and get my four inch block under there so I'm almost positive it's not going to reach here that looks all right hey you can do it just use your head wait until that all in there fully clears this will be a little bit of a pain in the ass I got my little tube for the throttle cable in there and I'm about lined up. It would be easier if someone was up, else was here. But I'm stubborn. It is almost there. I want the cable to shove into that. The tube's supposed to go right into the end of that. All right, my bottom studs are going in. Let me put this bad boy on first. And that's it. Okay, she's in there now. I got it all up in there. Three of my bolts in. Top of left one. Bottom two studs, got the nuts on them, and then the one over here with the half moon on the end. Since I'm, if you're by yourself, I just take a magnet, go up there and stick it on the solenoid, right beside the, right in front of the half moon bolt, the head, and uh, get over here and just don't push on it, but it holds it enough in there to where you can catch some threads, and then you can do that by yourself. So I've got to do all that, put this tin back in here, hook up all my harnesses, hook up my fuel line but the one thing I can't seem to probably do by myself is uh, the uh, tube for the throttle cable it needs to actually go into the larger and the metal cup end of the where the cable comes out the sheathing you, you have to stick it in there it kind of gets in there and grabs it um, but yeah I take I usually take somebody to have somebody push up against like a take your pry bar 
and have somebody back out here push on this and someone gets underneath and gets a hold of that cable and for, wiggles it until until it all of a sudden gives and gets in there and it'll give you that little bit of extra distance see i'm i'm not quite halfway through that circle where my hold down for the cable the lock whatever you want to call it <laughs> so and i gotta h h hook up the heater boxes and um, all the cables and stuff won't be long won't be long and we'll be starting well, you know i wanted to rebuild the carburetor but the customer said oh no it's fine like usual and it is not fine or it wasn't we pulled it apart last night it was dirty as hell inside rust gunk black crap it was yeah it needed clean well didn't rebuild it we opened it up just cleaned it and gasket was fine so it was sucking air we we tested the each you know the intake boots and the intakes and everything was fine but when you cut the carburetor it'd run better but it was sucking air from somewhere else where it's not supposed to because it was you know jets were plugged and the uh the needle valve was sticking occasionally and then there was trash under the needle valve that's not the biggest issue the biggest issue is when this thing came here it had a fan noise going on inside there and you know you saw me put the generator on i checked it shimmed it and turned it and it was fine but when you get it in the car and you start it up and it's running 2000 rpms or whatever you're revving it up you hear the noise come back so probably very likely a hairline crack in the fan blades so hoping i have the right one there's two different sizes i gotta get this cage the squirrel cage off i'm gonna try to do it in there well so far so good i ended up because I, you know, it's all painted. I took these hinge brackets off for the deck lid and then released all the bolts and back and I pulled it back. You know, I took this tent out and pulled it back some um, because, you know, I realized I got to get this tube and the cable, throttle cable out. So, and then the squirrel cage came off fine. So, I mean, I don't, I didn't hear a noise in the first place. But uh, it seemed like this tin was a little bit needed adjustment. It was vibrating. That's why I want. I can't wait until I build my uh, engine start stand. Uh, I'm ordering some parts right now for to mount a Type 2 bell housing piece to it. So I, I'll have one now. Yeah, because this ain't no fun doing it in the car all freshly painted. But no boo boos. I'll put it all back together and uh, get back to cranking it up. Looks fine, I just gotta tune the carburetor up and give it a dry. It's running pretty good now. Yeah, it's alright now. Only problem I have is that the, the cable for the throttle is a uh, cable for fuel injection because this is a fuel injected car, so it's slightly shorter. I it seems to be all running the way it should be now. Uh, the only problem I had is uh, that a fuel injection throttle cable is a little shorter than the correct one or something new. The one with the black sheathing on the cable, you know, that goes inside the tube is actually the sign that it's a fuel injected one. I never knew that. Whew, it is getting hot. Why is it so hot on a January in Florida? Oh yeah. She goes, he's done. Put the deck lid on and call it a day. A just bugging day. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. Leave a like, comment, subscribe, and have a just bugging or a day.